This is David Smith, a contributor to House Street, and we're here in Singapore today just uh, at the conclusion of the uh, first Asian Silver Summit Conference, and Mike Maloney has been speaking here along with David Morgan. Mike uh, works with Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, and he's the author of The Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver, and he's agreed to give us a few minutes to talk to our House Street audience, which is a North American audience primarily in the United States and Canada and that we want to get his perspective on uh, what took place here and, and his viewpoint on a few things. Mike has been presenting uh, with David Morgan here of the Morgan Report, and also yesterday and today, both of these individuals were interviewed by Primetime Morning, which is the uh, primary uh, media or outlet in Singapore, and they broadcast uh, to mainland China, and my understanding is they have several hundred million viewers, so they have a very wide reach. Uh, Mike, what's the core message that you've tried to impart to your audiences here uh, over the last couple of days at the conference? Gold and silver are going higher. <laughs> a lot higher. Sounds good to me. Uh, basically, it's that every government on the planet seems to be uh, printing currency like crazy today. Uh, and uh, we're going through some economic crises, and if you compare this to what has happened all the time in the past, without exception, when governments abuse their currency supplies, especially like the dollar is being abused today, gold and silver do an accounting of that. They rise in price measured in that currency, but more than that, they rise in purchasing power. They rise, they, they, they buy, even though the dollar, it might be falling in value, gold and silver are going up so fast in comparison that they purchase you more real estate down the road or more shares of stock. And that's uh, really what I'm concerned about. And so, that's uh, one of my primary messages, and the other ones are, one is just to become uh, financially literate, uh, understand what is going on with your own personal economics. Uh, understanding the rest of how the economy works is a very good thing. If you can, uh, if you understand more about what is going on in an economy, then uh, than the majority of the people, you have an edge over them. And uh, the likelihood of you increasing your wealth is greatly enhanced. You know, you've spoken all around the globe, literally, to audiences in Europe and uh, North America and other places in Asia. And how, what is your sense of the audience that you saw over the last couple of days uh, in relationship to people that you've spoken with before? Uh, well, it seems like people all over the planet are just ravenous for this information, right? They are captivated by it, and they want, because everybody can sense that there is something wrong with the economies around the world. They know that things are sort of out of whack, and it's, it's like you spin a top, and it, it works really well for a while, and it starts to wobble. And we're in that wobbling stage. And, uh, uh, you know, South America, um, speaking in Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, uh, is they're, they're just as fascinated by it. I would say, though, that um, the uh, Chinese, a, a lot of the Asian countries, uh, may have a little bit closer connection with gold because uh, their parents have told them stories about, you know, when I, I just did Taiwan uh, a month and a half ago, and um, it, was, it was amazing how responsive they were to my message, uh, the generation that I'm speaking to, the people that I'm speaking to, have not experienced currency crisis, but they remember their parents or their grandparents telling them about uh, when Chiang Kai-shek retreated to the, uh, the, the island of Taiwan, uh, and they printed themselves into a hyperinflation. I showed a chart of a hyperinflation uh, during the Ming Dynasty measured in strings of 1,000 cash, which was a paper currency that they were printing and how to purchase a, a, an ounce of silver, uh, it went into a hyperinflation uh, back in the uh, 14th century. Uh, and uh, then I showed them a chart of 1937 to 1949. And I showed them a one yuan note uh, from 1946. And then I showed them a one million yuan note that had a date on it of uh, May you know, they actually had the day that the note is produced. It was uh, May 28th, 1949. So just three years later, you go from a one yuan note being worth something to a one million yuan note, uh, and, and that 
was worth nothing. And so their parents told them that, you know, about how gold, you know, having some gold or silver is what gets you through these things. Mm -hmm. And when you get, you know, gold and silver are money. When you get rid of competing currency, their value climbs because there's less units of currency out there to purchase all these things. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they've been very, very responsive uh, to the message. And let me show you something here. This was sort of fun. Uh, you know, in traveling, I, um, you go from country to country, and you've got to, every time you go into another country, you've got to exchange your currency for another currency. And uh, then what you discover, though, is if you forget, that currency goes to zero. You cross that line. You, you don't stop at that currency window at the airport. You know, you come from New Zealand, and you go to Taiwan, and if you go past that currency window, that one goes to zero. And then you're in Taiwan, and you travel to Colombia, and that one goes to zero. And you know, then you come to Colombia to uh, uh, Peru, and the Colombian currency goes to zero, and so on and so forth. But what amazed me is a, a friend in uh, Taiwan, a new friend of mine in Taiwan, uh, gave me, if I can find him here, no, oh, I can't find him. So this is not a very good example. Here they are. There we are. You'll love this. These are some um, a 200 and 500 new Taiwan dollars that the government produced just about a year and a half ago, something like that, two years ago. They have an expiration date. When they printed, oh them, they, they printed these, <laughs> they sent them to all of their citizens. They sent them some free currency that expires in 11 months. So you have to use these in 11 months. And then, on top of that, the government would not take them. These are, uh, you couldn't pay your taxes with them. You couldn't go to the post office and pay for postage with them. You couldn't use them in the schools. No government agency, you couldn't travel the railways with them. Uh, these, uh, the government would not accept, so they were, the government considered them worthless. Mm -hmm. Yet the people, so here's the government demonstrating to their own population, without a doubt, that paper currency is worthless, because this expired. Can you imagine what happened with velocity uh, as this was nearing its expiration oh. date? It becomes a hot potato and everybody's right. trying to get rid of it. <laughs> the value is going down, suddenly, you know, first this would buy, the same thing as a regular uh, 200 uh, new Taiwan dollar note, uh, or Thai, Thai dollar note. And, uh, uh, but then as, you know, it may have taken millions of these to buy a Taiwan note toward the end, because nobody wants to get stuck with it on that last day when it goes to zero. True limited time offer. 